What? What the hell was that? You saw something? Something you know, ran through the field over there. It's cool. Oh, look, that just started going off. Oh my god, already. What the hell is that noise? It's coming from the coffin area. Yeah, it sounds like someone's in there. Hello? Look at that. Oh, it's looking right at us. It's looking right at us. Oh, what was, what was that? Uh-uh. It just opened. When we first bought this house, we were told by the previous owner to be careful mowing the lawn back here because there's tombstones in the grass. Don't hit it with your riding mower or you're going to wreck the blades. And we were like, we didn't know what she was talking about. Come to find out that um, they weren't here. Her daughter came to stay with us for a weekend and she came out to show us where these graves are because we were half kidding, but we had had like rods we were trying to find them. We were like, we don't see these tombstones. When we were doing our walkthrough with Heather at the Greystone Manor, she starts telling us about all these dead bodies that were buried on the property. And I'm like, okay, that's pretty creepy. Well, then she points at me and she says, well, by the way, you're standing on a dead body right now. As soon as she said that, I look to my right and there's this bird feeder out of nowhere just moving. It was almost like a greeting. Maybe it was something telling me, hey, you're standing on me, get off. That just started moving like yeah. crazy. That thing will just spin in a circle and there's no reason for it. You put EMF meters here, K2s, any equipment in. Bro, wait, that just started spinning what? out of nowhere. Yeah, see how it's spinning now? Wait, it did. And you don't have and, to touch it. And that it. one's not moving. No. No, and there's no wind out here right now. Look, look at the leaves. There's yeah. nothing moving. Look at now it's going in the circle. There's 100% an energy source. It's literally right here. Yeah. I wanted to give a massive shout out to Scentbird for sponsoring today's episode. I love trying new things and there's so many different fragrances. When was the last time you went to an expensive perfume cologne store and you were like, hmm, I like this, I like that. This is great. If you don't know what Scentbird is, it's a subscription-based service where you have access to so many popular fragrances like Prada, Gucci, Burberry, Versace, and even some indie labels like like Skylar, Confessions of Rebel, and so many more. I have three different ones here that Scentbird sent me. Scentbird gives you a very generous portion. You're not stuck with spending three to $500 on an expensive perfume or cologne. You get just enough to last you for a month. And if you're like me, I spray a crap ton of fragrance on me. I mean, I'm like, I like to smell good. Now this one smells really good. It's called Royal Earth by The Harmonist. It's got a sweet smell to it too. I think a woman can probably wear this. You can lock up your fragrance. I mean, if you have a kid, this is one of Tiff's favorite fragrances. I could wear it as well. It's for men or for women. It's got like a vanilla floral fruity smell to it. Still kind of sweet, but my personal new favorite has to go to this one. This stuff smells amazing. Very high-end perfume, by the way. Also known as Ombre Royale. When I smelled this for the very first time, it took me back to my childhood. I have some great memories as a kid. Living down here in Florida, my dad was a landscaper and used to plant a lot of different trees. And I absolutely love smelling something and bringing me back to a magical moment in my life. Now, I know what you're thinking. Omar, this is probably really expensive. We're talking about high-end fragrances, but I promise you, you're not gonna spend more than $17 for a very generous portion of something very high-end. Every month, you get to pick out a brand new fragrance, so there's no surprises. If you're a little indecisive, no worries. You can take their online quiz to ask you some questions about what you may or may not like. This tool is amazing for helping you make a better choice in a fragrance. And if you wanna get 55% off your very first month, Use my promo code OMARGOSHTV. There's nothing better than someone coming up to you and telling you how amazing you smell too. Thank you Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Links will be down below in the description. Imagine that was to go off while you're sleeping. What would you do? Yeah, no, <laughs> Possessing in a way. It takes you back. It's to the days that we're gonna live in. <laughs> it's weird, right? Like you feel like you've, you've lived those days, but you haven't. Not in this lifetime. No. Hey guys. Look at the puppies. So oh my goodness. You were looking in this. What are you doing? Right? So what you mean? What are you doing? It wasn't oh, Chucky. Oh, oh. It wasn't Chucky. They will not go in the basement. I'm terrified of the basement. Like there's certain areas of the house they don't want any part of. Wait, so they won't go in the basement? No. So dogs pick up, they protect the human body and they protect your physical. And they also pick up lower level vibrations. So they pick up a ghost. They pick up 
lower level um, uh, elementals, things like that. And then cats see the high, are of the higher order. They see higher energies. That's why the Egyptians buried cats with them because they would usher their souls into the afterlife. So they see like angels, people who crossed over, so spirit energy. So that's why cats and dogs will react very differently to like hauntings because you'll notice cats a lot of times will like look up high and they'll watch things up here where dogs will look low and growl at things. So we have this whole spooky house to ourself. Hey, by the way, if you didn't know who the man is behind the camera right now, my boy, Mr. Mo Sarji himself. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Make sure to go subscribe to his channel. I'm gonna leave a link down below to his channel, especially a link to this beautiful place if you wanna come and explore or investigate it for yourself. Now, we got really blessed tonight to be able to have this place completely to ourselves. I mean, every room we will have access to, including the office of the madame. Yeah, let's go in there real quick. Let's do it. And what's really cool is that there is a haunted baby carriage that has some sort of attachment to it. I don't know if the doll in it is haunted, but the baby carriage itself for sure is 100% haunted. There's Ouija boards everywhere, including a seance table with a built-in Ouija board on it. Now, Mo wanted to start playing on it. I'm like, nah, I, I ain't cool with that. I'm telling you, we got to do it, dude. We got to play the Ouija board here. Look at this thing. This thing is just telling us You're to catching. summon it. Oh my, <laughs> what? A Ouija board pillow? Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> Heather did tell us, too, that even before she got controlled over this property, people were coming in with Ouija boards, not knowing what they were doing, summoning evil. So, I don't know. Oh, what the hell was that? Please get me away from that thing. Yeah, it's something. Just, by that table? Yeah. It's crazy because the last time that I was touched by an unseen force was when I was with a psychic. Not only does this old home have a lot of history, then you have the haunted happenings. Oh, and by the way, a psychic owns it that communicates with spirits pretty much daily. She's got a crystal ball. Oh, bro, have you ever looked into a crystal ball? No, I've never. Oh my gosh. What? I just, that was creepy. Hey, what if it was true that you can like see things? Like, oh. What? I heard something. It sounded like something like walking down the hall or something. Hey, I hear music. I hear music too. What the hell? Where is that coming from? You know, Heather did say that because of the Native American land, yeah. sometimes you'll hear like chants or drums, but that's usually outside. Yeah. I, I was hearing music standing over there, but not out here. You can hear it. It got louder for a second. Yeah, I hear it. I hear something. I hear it now. Do they have like some music playing in here? What the hell? It sounds like a violin. Yeah, a violin, but it's getting louder. You wanna use the REM pod in here? Yeah, why not? Let's put it on For the, the record, no one's ever investigated in, in this particular room before. Uh, she gave us access to it. Whoa. Ooh. Already? Can you come and touch that antenna? Touch the REM pod. <gasps> oh my God. Touch it again. What's here right now? We know there's an entity here. Can you touch the REM pod? Like physically touch it, make it go to blue. It'll let us know that you're actually here. footsteps upstairs is that a confirmation are you going upstairs I do hear footsteps upstairs good thing is the cats do you let me see are the cats they still sleeping Three cats are still sleeping. One right here, one on the couch, and one up there on the mantle. Okay, so this portrait right here, we we're talking about it in Mo's video. They, oh, no way. 
No way. She looks creepy too, bro. Bro, you didn't hear the door behind I you? I did hear it, yeah, I heard it. It creaked open a bit. But anyways, I'm not sure what her name is. Heather did let us know, but she kept seeing this woman in her vision, and supposedly this woman was a prior owner to this house. And then they found this this portrait that I think is connected to this house, and it's exactly the woman that Heather saw. In fact, Heather even drew a sketch and compared the two, and this is the woman that she kept seeing. And she was the wife of one of the owners here. I forgot his name. Maybe it was John? Was it John? I'm not sure, but one of the owners died upstairs in the green room. We're gonna take you there. He had a terrible accident. He was riding his horse and his horse got spooked out or something and came back and the horse kind of like fell on top of him and he didn't think anything of it. He came back home. He was in a little bit of pain, went and laid in bed. Come to find out he had a lot of internal bleeding, ended up dying a couple weeks later. So yeah, really sad story. And he is said to haunt. What's crazy is this room also, she was saying that one of the women that lived here it was stopping her from having children that anytime she would come in this room, she would end up having a miscarriage and it was connected to a spirit that won't let you have children. Definitely something dark in this room. There's a sense of heaviness. Actually, there's a lot of heavy points throughout this entire house, even on the property where they have the graves outside. If you come here and you get a, an amazing tour like we did with Heather, She'll tell you guys so much, like it's content overload. So yeah, that's why like when Omar's saying like, he's sorry if he didn't get it right. This is so much, it was so much, so much to know. So much. In fact, there's even a mirror in here. We're going to be playing Bloody Mary on Mo's channel, but I had the idea. There's a haunted mirror. Come, let's show you. Originally, this wasn't a bathroom. So they ended up putting a wall here. And after they did that, Heather ended up getting scratched on her hand just you know to like let her know like hey we're not very happy that you're changing up our house now check this out this portrait that we see right here at first glance that looks like a regular portrait of children all three of those children are dead in that photo that's a post-mortem photo and this is something that was really popular during this time during the victorian era where when people died especially children they would take photos of the dead and make them look like they were alive still. It was like their their death photo. We don't do that anymore. And it's kind of, I don't know, It's how do you feel about that? It's morbid. It's a little morbid. Yeah, I, sure. I don't think it should ever be done. Like, it's weird, like why do you wanna make a person look like they're alive for a photo when they're dead, you know? Just bury the damn person. Let's talk about this mirror. This mirror came from a super haunted hotel in New York City that was brought here and people have seen entities and dark figures through the mirror. In fact, she was explaining to me that sometimes when this door is like kind of cracked open, through the crack, you could see this figure just standing there at times. I'm regretting it already, but. <laughs> you know. What the hell? Okay. What time is it? It's not even one. That should not be going off. 48. That should go off on the hour only. I don't know, maybe it's... No, that's how these clocks go off. They go off on the outer only. That's what's the, the whole clock. clock. Maybe, I don't know, maybe But it's... It, ever since we've been here today, it's been going off every hour. Every hour. And now it's 10 yeah. minutes early. Yeah, it's 12.48. Seven minutes early. Yeah, it's crazy. What? That makes no sense. You wanna go outside? Yeah, let's do see it. See if we can see those lights. Let's do it. Let's about. do it. She's talking about like alien lights and there stuff. There's yeah. balls of light that appear. I have footage of it. Uh-huh. Um, I could sort of show you, but they're big balls of light. They look like softball size from here. They're big. And they, the tree line that's back there, they just hover above the tree line. They just appear. It looks like somebody's lighting a lighter. It'll go like click, 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 and then it'll just turn into this ball of flame. Floats around. It moves really weirdly, like erratically. And then it'll go like behind the trees. It moves around, then disappears. It's like and it fast just wraps it up. Oh, that's slow. a video. And it's going back and forth. Look. I don't know if we you can barely see light. the tree line. Thank you. But it'll move, and then wow. it'll just like float behind the trees. Thank you. No kidding. Light. That oh, yeah, is, yeah. Look how bright what? it is. See how it gets real bright and it's got its own. Well, she was moving her camera, but then you watch it, it just float. See, that? it's moving already. Right, it's starting to move. That's definitely not a lantern. No. Yeah, it's that's, not that a Chinese lantern. Yeah, because yeah, it's oh, going, going down, right. too. It's, now, it went behind the trees, but it pops up again. Oh, behind the trees. Oh, yeah. Whoa. It's not a star. That could be an alien. So, look, I took a photo of this. Nothing. 
-hmm. What is that? Oh, it's glowing. What is that? What the heck? It's one of those glowing lights. Yeah, and it's too late in the season for like fireflies or anything. It's too big. Well, look, this is the same photo. I just zoomed in a bit and I took another photo. Yep. What the heck? But what's the alien story here? Apparently people have reported sightings of aliens throughout the years, like confirmed documented things on the news in this exact area in the fields all around. And her and her friends were out here one time and they seen like some big flying orb. They showed us the video. I don't know if you recorded some of that. I did, on yeah. And it was just, just going back by the tree line, up and down, up and down, moving in sporadic ways. And it wasn't like one of those lanterns. It was like legit, like a, a, a UFO. Nobody could know what it is. But this area in particular has had a lot of UFO sightings, even crop circles in her own cornfields, which are down that way. And uh, and that's where all the shadow men can be seen and even the, uh, the Wendigos. Let's walk over there. That is so scary. It's so dark out here. This is where the little boy was laid to rest by his mom. She didn't want him buried at the cemetery. She wanted to be able to look out from the kitchen to see her son and always, you know, come and hey, hang so out with him. You remember how that thing was moving earlier and it started moving on its own? Yeah, I caught that on video too. It's not moving right now, so let's see if it's gonna start moving. It's like right when we came and it came closer. Last time we started talking about him. If there's a spirit here by this tree, can you m move that thing above you on the branch? Make it shake or something? Wait, it's starting to move. It is moving a little bit. But earlier. What the? Hello? So keep in mind, she does say shadow men roam through here all the time, like gray men apparently. And they've actually tried to like open cars, like people that come here and stay in the Airbnb or the B&B, they think someone's like trying to break into their car, but we're literally in the middle of nowhere. There's no one out here. You can, people here leave their doors unlocked because that's how safe it is. And uh, it turns out it's the shadow men. They like to play tricks. They steal stuff from cars, move things around, and it happens frequently here, apparently. Didn't it happen with some girl's phone or something? Yeah, she couldn't find her phone all night long. She left it on the bed, she got out to get water, came back, phone was completely gone. Eventually, she found it like in the sink or on the cabinet or, or something. Some, somewhere where she hadn't even been. Yeah. Oh, look, it's moving. It is moving. Oh, yeah. It's just moving very subtle. What? What the hell was that? You saw something? Something you know, ran through the field over there. Dude, this is around where I've seen the thing on the SLS camera. Oh. I don't remember the, the grass being disturbed like this. Whoa, before. yeah, look at that. Like, actually. Look, something, something really big ran through here. I was here That wasn't there? Look, it's over here too. Like that's been disturbed. That looks like it's burnt. So when I was filming here, I see, we seen deers, like a deer eyes. Uh -huh. But that was not a deer what I just seen. It, it looked very tall. You think it went towards the cemetery? Nothing creeps out people more than being in the middle of the woods in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere, while being far from home too. Put it this way, the owner, who's a psychic, doesn't even come outside at nighttime. She told us we were crazy. Well, it looked like it ran that way. You know what I find really interesting? That the owner herself won't even come out here at nighttime. She hates it. Hates it. I told her I'd be down to like set up a tent and sleep for the night. <laughs> She's like, you're crazy. But I mean, I would do it. We should maybe do it in the future. I'm down. We definitely gotta come back. There's so much to see here. Bro, this entrance to this cemetery does not look like inviting at all. It literally looks like a mini cemetery. Uh, you know there's gonna be some demons or spirits living around here right now. 
We just don't know if something's been conjured up here. Every part of this property, whether it's the house, the basement, the upstairs, has a different theme and different spirit attached to it. Like you got the cemetery, you got like the Wendigos out up there in the, in the cornfield, you got the spirits of each bedroom. You know what's crazy? One of the first things that I said to myself before even knowing any of the history here, especially like the whole alien connection, is like I'm looking around and I'm seeing all the cornfields, I'm seeing all the, just all the land that's nearby. I mean, there's really just nothing out. And I thought to myself, this looks like a setting like for a movie for aliens like you know when you just when aliens like land or if you watch like men in black and you've seen like where the aliens came and it's just like open land that's what it looks like here like if i was an alien visiting earth this is where i would more than likely land you have a big body of water nearby there's a whole lot of nothing here too of course you have food i wonder if they use corn as like fuel for their alien ships oh good point and that, why, why are they always in cornfields right because corn can be turned into fuel right <gasps> what the hell is that bro i don't know it was either something walking next to us or like a knock no it, it sounded like something standing and like kind of moving right behind you like right next to us hello I want to go into the cornfield so bad, but you got to go through all the thorns. Like, look at all the thorn bushes, just to get to them. And I have a really terrible headache right now. Oh, 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 wait. Oh, you all right? No, I just got a really bad headache and I got really dizzy. I lost my footing for a sec. Can we get out of the cemetery? Yeah, let's get out of here. I was just going to tell you that too. We should go check out the basement. Supposedly there is a lot more bodies buried here, especially towards the cornfields where Native Americans might have been buried. Didn't she say there was like a mound, like a burial mound? Apparently she thinks there's like thousands of bodies buried across these, these lands over here. Hmm. And I'm willing to bet you this right here is a grave as well. Whoa, there is a marker right there. What the heck? It looks like... Let's go inside. Well, this is where you saw that tall figure. Right here, standing in front of Chucky. And it wasn't the bear. No, it definitely wasn't the bear. I didn't even see it. Well, yeah, because you saw it from this window. Yeah, it was out of From the outside. And the bear's kind of behind the cupboards here, so you can't right. see the bear. Wow. So there is eight doors in this kitchen. Look, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight eight doors like I, I don't even believe it this is weird when we were in here earlier this wasn't messy like this there, there wasn't toys all over the ground was there oh wait i don't think so no not like this something like threw all these toys at these whoa fire. this kitchen was like clean yeah that's strange bro and this chair is moved i think those toys were inside this box they were because I walked through here with her. When we were walking through here. Uh -huh. Like actually. Huh. That makes no sense. All right, so this door behind me right now is where the basement is. We've been down there, but we haven't filmed down there. So no. we're gonna go downstairs together because it is really, really scary down there. So I don't wanna go down there alone. Hey, before we go down there, I gotta show you something. Hey, pretty lady, how you doing? <laughs> He's getting, he, he's getting knocked out by a nun. <laughs> this is a wall that they put up. Remember when I was showing the bathroom? Yeah. And in this area right here is where Heather got scratched. And you know, there used to be a toilet right here. So I guess the cats really love coming down here. Bro, it's creepy. Bro, any basement's creepy, but this one is especially creepy. Look at all these cool names here. We got to put our names on this wall. Yeah, for sure. Wow. A lot of people have been here, so if you come to this place, look at that. You can put your name on the wall here in the basement. Not a bad idea. Not bad at all. All right, ready? Let's do it. For me, all basements are scary, okay? 
but this one had a different story. Have you ever had a dream where you're somewhere and then you like teleport to somewhere else? That's what it felt like when we went down into the basement. It just felt like we teleported into another world, another dimension. It was a different vibe, kind of off, mysterious. This basement, just the entrance of it, looks like a movie set. Something That's like right a, here. Like a horror movie. This is like a psychic vibes. Right, you walk in, you're in another world. Oh look, we're in Narnia. It's so cold in here. Dude, look at this. It's like you're entering a whole other world. Look at this. It is. Like you come from here, there's a furnace room, and then you walk in through there, and it's like it's medieval. Like yeah. It's like everywhere you go, there's something different in this place. Yo, what is down here though? Supposedly this was given to Heather for her birthday, and I this is this this is pretty morbid. What? What? Oh. Wait, that just started moving on its own? What? Dude, the radio just turned on in here too. Listen, listen, listen. That oh. was not on right now. Oh my god. I turned it off. Okay. That was not on. Dude, that was a, not because we were down here earlier. You do realize you do realize there's a casket behind you. That's what I was gonna tell you. And what's crazy is that that was a real casket used. I think it was one of those loner caskets like they have at the Wilson Castle. You know, people that can't, I guess, they don't have a whole lot of money for a funeral. They use these caskets just for like a viewing for the wake. And there's like body juice. Yeah, it's, it's kind of gross Ugh. inside of there. Here, let's take a closer look. This is an old school wicker. Look, if you look real close, there's still like remnants of like deceased, like fluids and stuff. You can see like there's like really old dust on there. Let's see all the little stains, like liquid stains. Like dead bodies like laid in this casket. And this is where I was telling you that cats will come in here and lay between oh they sit in here yeah look there's cat hair look at the cat hair look oh <laughs> they literally just lay in this casket and chill and look, oh, look down here look you can see like body fluid you see that kind of staining up the ew yeah it's kind of gross 50 but, bucks for you to lick that right now you couldn't even pay me a thousand to lick it what about two thousand uh, yeah, that's I mean, I'll probably that. still do it for a thousand. <laughs> I do it for a thousand too. This wicker example was used only temporarily for the funeral and viewing of the body. Like I told you, it was used to, to view the body. The deceased was not buried in it. Wicker caskets such as this one were used over and over. Exactly. It was like a loner casket or like they said, it was used to preserve the body too because it's got the... <laughs> you know what's the, the, the funniest part about that is they needed... A doctor to show up to let you know that your loved one is dead I mean you can easily tell if someone's dead you know what I mean well in those days you ever heard the term saved by the bell like a long time ago they would they they were so bad about this I mean people so many people back in the day the hell is that so many people back in the day were being buried alive and it was it was like the pandemic of, of then the, I mean, it was so bad that they ended up tying strings to people's hands when they would bury them or to their feet and they would have a bell up on the headstone and that's where the term graveyard shift came from because the gravekeeper would be like just staying around if he hears that bell go off that means somebody got buried alive yeah so yeah they didn't have the technology that we have today honestly if i was a, a graveyard shift person and i seen one of those bells ringing i'm running <laughs> i'm just gonna be like yeah i'm out i'm out i don't know if that's a zombie or or someone that's actually dead or not dead and i'm out how cool is this basement bro it's like the ultimate man cave this is so cool we also got dead animals down here too which you know it's a must and we have coffins that held dead people i'm gonna name you tabitha don't know why, but I just am. It feels so weird petting that. It feels real, right? I mean, it is real. It was a real thing. It's like, it feels nice to touch it. It's like soft. I wonder if like animals, like dead animals can haunt a place. You know what I mean? Like, oh, she did say something about a cat. Oh, <gasps> she did a phantom cat. A ghost cat. Yeah. 
there is a ghost cat that haunts the Greystone Manor. And uh, we haven't come across it yet, but hey, maybe we will. This right here is another original chair from the house. This one rotting away here in the corner. This was in here before? Yeah, look at it. Nice. So cool. What the hell is that noise? It's coming from the coffin area. Yeah, it's tapping. There's something like tapping on the coffin. What the hell? It's like coming from the table here. It was coming from there, now it's coming from here. It stopped. Alright, I don't know what that was. Dude, it sounds like somebody's talking. What the heck? And there's music. music. It just got louder. <laughs> this is so wild. Every music they're going to offer in this house. Oh, shit. So there's a gift shop down here, and while we were filming for Mo's video, we start hearing music playing coming from in here. And mind you, it is locked, and there's no other way to get in but through this door. And you could see, yeah, if you look down there, the radio was turned on. And it's 100% locked. I do not have a key to open this gift shop. That's cool. All right, so as I was over here, just kind of admiring everybody's signatures right by the basement, I watched this permanent marker just do that. And of course I wasn't filming it, but I just wanted to share that little story with you. Um, while that happened too, by the way, I managed to tag up the wall there did something a little bit different there's Moe's name if you get to visit the Greystone Manor be sure to sign your name over here sign it over over here by my name yeah hey can you do that again can you move that permanent marker that was really cool I'm gonna stand back Go ahead, go for it. Our fam, let's go upstairs. How creepy did this thing sound when we turned it on earlier? I did like an Instagram story for it. When we were up here a little bit earlier with Heather, she was kind of giving us a tour of the place, giving us some history. One thing that she, I mean, cause she was giving us so, so much information, but I managed to look up in the corner over here and I see this picture of an old woman on a rocking chair. And it says that she was gonna be a hundred years old. Her husband died in the civil war and the soldiers said for her hundredth birthday, if she made it to a hundred, they were gonna make her a, a chair. Well, she made it to a hundred, they came and brought this chair and surprised her with it she sat in it they took that photo she ended up dying just four months later and wouldn't you know the chair is actually right here behind me the exact chair that miss kyle i think that was her name on her 100th birthday sat in oh look this is this was her socks no way yeah. framed socks what so look, before she died, she asked that the chair, footstool, photos, and frame socks be given to her daughter's husband, William Sweatland of Wisconsin. So, that's crazy, bro. Look at this, she was 100 years old, man. God bless her. Man, imagine leaving someone your sock after you die. If I die, give my underwear to Omar. <laughs> <laughs> the dirty ones. So this is the room that Mo is going to be sleeping in tonight. This is the red room. I'm not even looking forward to that anymore. After what happened in my video. We were up here a little bit earlier and something strange happened. So I, I walk out of here 
and I had my hat kind of like halfway on my head something like took my hat off just like that and I think Mo caught that on video right after that whatever did that came rushing in here and the door like started moving it was like a wham bam like whoosh, whoosh. at the same at the same time kind of like it knocked your head because I saw your hat fly off and then I went out to you and this closed halfway on its own I set up these LED cat toys all around the room to see if something would communicate with us. You have to physically touch these in order for them to go off. As soon as we laid them down, it was like something was touching them over and over again. Oh, look, that just started going off. Oh my God, already. Just started going off. Okay, that should have stopped already. Like they stopped after no, two it, seconds. No, it stopped yeah. after I touched Something's it. actually making it go off Something's right now. Something's making it go off now. Whoa. Can you touch that ball again? And look, it's not me. I'm stopping on the floor. Yeah. Same here. That's not me. You really have to physically touch it. Let me just show you guys. That's how hard you have to hit it. Right. So something actually just physically touched that cat ball, bro. Can you touch the cat ball on the bed again? Although this room is creepy. At this moment right now, like earlier, we were getting some strange vibes here. It doesn't feel as heavy as it, as it did before. No, no. But you know what felt extremely heavy? Was that room. The green room. The kids room. Oh, yeah, the kids room. That's what they call yeah. the room. Oh, the green room definitely is heavy. But the kids room, let's go in the green room real quick. Let's do it. So this is where- We should, we should- Oh my God. What, what the hell is that? What is that? <laughs> it's the cat. <laughs> no. Oh man. It's the cat. That cat's been scaring me. The like cat followed. That's the one that was downstairs coughing. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Let's bring the cat balls because that room, we had a lot of activity on the SLS camera. Holy crap. It's stretching itself across the bed. Now, this room is called the green room. It's the room I was telling you about, about that man, John, that was riding on the horse. Horse crushed him. He got terribly hurt. Well, this is the room that he died in. Now, we were in there earlier using an SLS tool. This is a tool that a lot of ghost hunters use. While we were using the SLS, we saw this figure forming on the bed. It's like his spirit was reliving that horrible moment of him dying slowly. Now, inside that closet is a travel chest, aka suitcase from like World War II era. Okay, so that came from Auschwitz. Auschwitz is a prison and it's in Poland and it that yeah that came from a concentration camp they used to they used to actually bring I guess things well anyways uh, come to find out that when the woman that owns this house which is a psychic Heather she purchased that at a garage sale and the owner was like hey wait a minute before you take that you should know that this has some pretty bad history tied to it supposedly someone committed suicide after owning this someone which was a, a mother she was taking care of her sick mom she ended up snapping and killing her mother that she was taking care of yeah some really bad juju tied to this suitcase i'm gonna put one of these yeah I'll, I'll put this one here on the couch on that on the bed why is that one still going off there we go. If whatever's in here is with us still, can you make one of these balls go off? Come touch this cat ball over here on top of the suitcase. Would love if you did. Can you come touch it? Do you have enough energy to do so? I think we should turn off the lights completely. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that's all we really can do. It's a little quiet. We know there's something attached to the chest in the closet. So that little ball that you're seeing up there right now, you can touch it by communicating. That's how you can communicate with us. All you have to do is touch it and we'll know that you're here. Maybe we can help you. Oh my God, oh my God. Whoa. So it didn't touch the one in there, but it touched this one. That's confirmation right there. 
Can you make that one on the bed go off again? What about the one inside the closet here? You're awfully quiet tonight. <gasps> what is that? What did I just hear? There's something in the hallway, bro. There's something in the hallway. I wonder if that just came from the kids' room. It sounded like that damn monkey again. It was like a kind of, but it was like more like a, a friend, like a girly sound. Oh man, this is the one place that like when I went in, I was like, I don't want to come back here again. I started getting a bad headache. No, maybe it came from in here. This is the gold room. And someone also died in this room. Honestly, I say you, you go into that, that clown room with all the dolls. Because right, that noise came from there. Remember we heard the doorknob, like, moving? Just us. Go in there, go in there. It smells different. We were surrounded by creepy dolls, pictures of dead children. I think some of the dolls were haunted too, but the creepiest thing in this room had to be the animatronic chimpanzee. His eyes closed. Hey, monkey. Are you alive? Hey. <gasps> oh my god. The monkey! The monkey's moving! How again? Like, how does this keep happening? Let's stop moving now. But it went to it went to sleep earlier, remember? Maybe that's the noise that we were hearing. But what woke it up? I don't know. Let's close the door. Is that thing like plugged in or something? It's moving his eyes. Hey, monkey. Are you possessed by something? Bro, that's crazy. Do you know what this is? I just, I just clued into it. This is a trigger item. Dude, look at it, it's moving. Dude, it's looking at me. This is a trigger item, 100%. Yes, it's an automated thing, but this thing's turning off and on by itself, and it's interacting with us. There's something intelligent here, and it's using the monkey to communicate with us. And that's freaking scary. Like, that's not even like, like fun. Like, that's scary because who wants this thing moving in their bedroom? Talk to us. See, on command. On command, dude. I just asked it to talk to us. This thing's intelligent. Heather was freaking out when I told her about our interaction with the animatronic chimpanzee. She told me right away this thing is never plugged in, it hasn't worked in a very long time. It doesn't even have batteries. How on earth was it moving? Move your head again if you're here with us. If there's a spirit attached to you, move your head. If there's a spirit... Oh, 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 move oh, his oh, head. Oh, oh, oh. There is something attached to it. Look at that. Oh, oh it's looking God. right at us. Look it's looking right at us. What the hell? It's looking right at us. <laughs> Dude, whatever spirit is attached to that thing, like it's really intelligent. It can it can communicate with us. Oh, but look, look at this place. It's filled with like all these creepy dolls. Heather was telling us that there was somebody in here, and. This started playing all by itself, like ching, 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 and they went running out of here. There's also like a lot of real creepy. I mean, if you're not into dolls or you find dolls to be creepy, there's a lot in here. 
I mean, look, we got this, uh, wait, is this like one of those puppets? This reminds me from like a, a show called Are, Are You Afraid of the Dark? Like they had a puppet kind of similar to it. Oh, what was, what was that? Nuh-uh. was that? Bro, that was, that was one of those little clapping monkeys. Dude, something like fell from the bed it, or something. No, no, it flew from there. Scared the crap out of Dude, me. Dude, something fell or I, I don't know what just happened right now. Stop moving, you stupid monkey. Oh, gosh. Dude, look, what, what, what flew over there? I, I seen it mid-air. <gasps> oh my god. All right, do you want us to leave? I right, supposedly whatever spirits are attached to this room do not like when this door is closed. So I'm gonna close it. Well, that explains the monkey, f um, uh, that explains the doll flying off the counter over there. Cause there was one more, dude, look, there was, there's, there was one more doll there, it's missing. I'm, not, I'm gonna close the door. It just opened by itself. And that's what Heather said happens here. All right, I'm gonna close it again. Open the door, spirit. Open the door right now. What's causing that to even move? I, I don't know. Are you intelligent? Give us a sign if you are. Give us a sign if you're intelligent. Oh my god. <laughs> Bro, this is no, this is on a different level of paranormal than we've ever experienced. Yeah, yeah, Dude. yeah, yeah, that just happened. How was that There's nobody out here, bro. Nobody out here. That door just opened up on its own. I'm gonna do something uh, kind of crazy. I'm gonna turn the light off and close the door. Oh, God. We'll close this door, too. Hey, let's turn that light off over there. Are you gonna stay in here? Do you want me to? No. Okay. All right. We just turned off all the lights. Heather told us that whatever is in this room does not like it when you close the door. And it will let you know. I'm closing the door now. Are you mad that the door is closed? wonder what's in the attic. There's probably something up there. <gasps> Bro, did you just hear the door? Are you gonna come open the door? <gasps> what the? Bro, there's no way. It has to be one of these boards where I like, stuck. <gasps> Bro, I just felt a super cold draft when I opened that door. Something just came out. Like some kind of evil just came out of there. <coughs> you alright? <coughs> What's the matter, dude? I thought you were like praying or something. No, I don't feel good. What are you feeling? It's like something's attacking my head. Oh, dude, chill. Just say a little prayer. <coughs> Right when we opened that door, I felt it too. I felt like something came out of there. It felt like something came out of there. And it made me like cough and like choke up and I came in here and I just collapsed to the ground over here. <gasps> Dude. What the f was that? Did you just, it just sounded like something just was running down the hallway. Wait, you think that was a cat? No, that was too heavy to be a cat. That was an actual person. Or maybe we're exciting them. Maybe we're just 
stimulating them. My head doesn't feel stimulated right now. I, I'm in a lot of pain, dude. Are you? Something literally attacked me physically. Do you want to stay here? We don't have to stay no, here tonight. No, I, I, I no? don't want to do that. No way. No way. Damn, bro. Especially, especially after doing Bloody Mary in here. Maybe that's the problem. Just a bit ago, I was playing Bloody Mary. I never played this game before. And we decided to do it in front of that haunted mirror that I told y'all about. Well, as we're like in there, nothing's really happening. We're, you know, just kind of cracking some jokes here and there. I see this giant shadow standing behind Mo. Oh, oh, behind you, behind you. What the f Dude, there was a big black shadow right behind you right now. It was massive and it was too big to be his own shadow. That makes any sense. I mean, it wasn't pitch, pitch black. Like I was using the light that was kind of coming from his camera that I was able to see that way. But I saw this dark shadow. Bro, it, that was like behind you. I wonder if something's like trying to possess you or something. I think I kind of like took something out of the mirror. I mean, mirrors are portals. Everybody knows that, right? And being in the dark, we were like in night vision trying to like summon a Bloody Mary was probably a really bad idea. Samo's not feeling good. He goes down to the car. He's ready to go. I'm feeling kind of weird, but I want answers. I want to know what's going on here. So I stayed in the house alone. All right, so I'm back in this room. I feel like there's something calling me to this room. Something kind of mysterious. So Mo needed to take a breather, he went outside. There is a good chance that we may not spend the night here. Uh, anytime we uh, start feeling ill or just, I don't know, it's probably not a good idea. I'm gonna try to connect with the spirit box. You could download this app if... I just heard the REM pod go off. All right, Mo is not in the house anymore, he's outside. He took all his equipment and he's outside. He won't come back in here again. Is that you, Mo? Are you in here, Mo? <gasps> what the heck? Are you in here, Mo? I have no idea what I just heard. Maybe Mo was in the house, but I didn't see him. I mean, I see, actually, I see the lights on in his car right now. Like he's in his car chilling. Huh. This spirit box that I'm using, you can download it too. I'm gonna leave some links down below. There's two that I love using. Be sure to check them out. It's awesome. I like them personally a little bit better than a traditional spirit box that goes through radio stations. This uses a sound bank that spirits can manipulate. It's pretty cool. It's pretty accurate. But you have to be open-minded. Can you tell me what is attached to this room that I'm in right now? Me? Is it true what they say that w women can't have children? In the Only five? Only five? Oh my gosh. Slow down, slow down, slow down, please. John. I heard the name John. This Are you in here, John? Okay. I heard a yes and a no. It was weird. What's your name? Uh, 
I got the rim pot over there. Can you come touch that rim pod? Make it go off again? I just heard it going off. There it goes. There it goes going off. All right. I'm probably going to leave here in a second. Come touch that rim pod again. I feel like that REM pod was only going off when I had the spirit box on. All right, I'm gonna turn the spirit box on. Would that make you happy? Wait, I'm not sick. All right, maybe you're talking about John, the owner? Yes, okay. There was someone else that was sick. Me. Me? Who's me? Of course that thing's not gonna go off now. All right, I may have missed a couple of things when it came to the spirit box. Let me know here in the comments. Maybe some of those things that I missed that are pretty cool and compelling. I really wanna come back here again. I feel like my night is probably done. Big shout out to my boy Mo Sarji for having the guts, having the balls to come in here and explore all by himself with me in the Greystone Manor. And also have the guts to walk out in a situation let me know here in the comments if you want to see us come back here again and actually spend the night i don't think we're going to be able to spend the night tonight be sure to check out my friend mo's video that he did here where we played bloody mary it's a completely different video there is nothing in this video that you're going to see on his it's almost like a part two or i mean if he uploads his video before me a prequel so there's something trying come on touch it again I feel like every time I talk, that REM pod starts going off. It's crazy. This is an amazing place that Heather put together. She also does readings here. So if you wanna get like a psychic reading, definitely come and check out Heather Reese. She's amazing, she owns this place. And even if you're not into paranormal stuff, they have a beautiful property here that you could spend the night in and have breakfast in the morning. And maybe you could talk about some of the ghost stories in the morning with all the other guests. Thank you so much Scentbird for sponsoring today's episode. Make sure to check them out. Links will be down below in the description. Gotta go for now before we leave. Give me a kiss. Mwah.